Price opened its first shop in India in June 1995. Today it has over 700 exclusive stores here and multiple brands like Levi Strauss, Denizen and Dockers among others. But look at the apparel market and within that the denim market and you will see that there is a lot to cover. The unorganized sector constitutes about 70% of the 6,000 crore rupee jeans wear market in the country. And add to that the fact that there are multiple Indias to cater to and the task ahead seems like a mammoth one for a company like Levi's. So everyone and his grandmother wants to get into India. So you're right, it's hyper competitive. And if you look at apparel, uh, you and I can put up a apparel manufacturing unit in our backyard and nothing prevents us. Put a brand label on it and we can start selling. But I think where most companies and brands struggle is to find a very definitive point of view. I think we are lucky because the heritage and the legacy of the Levi's brands is the first pulling power or the first draw for consumers in the country. But then we've got to augment it by offering a consumer experience that really uh, you know, ensures that consumers stay with the brand. You know, I always say that there are four Indias within India. And uh, there are consumers who require products at very different price uh, segments. So from luxury to value. And therefore, a successful company would really require to offer um, you know, a portfolio of perhaps products or brands straddling price segments. So the first thing that we really look at is uh, Levi's is our, our uh, flagship brand. But can Levi's stretch across the four Indias? Perhaps no. And we'd like it to be premium and super premium. And therefore, for the value and the uh, economy segment, we've got another brand called Denizen. So between Denizen and Levi's, we, we believe we should be able to straddle, uh, you know, straddle uh, most of India. Given the competition and the need to tackle multiple markets within India, that Levi's has also expanded into various ranges of products. It launched accessories such as bags and belts in 2003 and has now moved into watches, footwear, even eyewear to give a complete fashion solution to Indian consumers who are getting more global, urban and demanding than ever before. Brand expert Harish Bijur believes that the company has done a pretty good job reaching out till now. In the Indian context, Levi's is the gold standard of the denim jean brand. Uh, so whether it be men's apparel or whether it be women's apparel, uh, you know, we're really talking Levi's to be the gold standard. Whether we started the 501 as we moved into N numbers of other transitions, I think Levi's is Levi's. When one is looking at rugged, one is looking at fashionable, when one is looking at in and with it, and one is looking at the young language, I think the language is spoken only by Levi's in India. To that extent, Levi's enjoys that big lead, which I think it must always use and capitalize upon. But Bijur also feels that the company may be moving too fast, perhaps ahead of its consumers in some cases. For instance, he cites the example of 2011 when Levi's changed its low-end brand signature to Denizen. The transition, Bijur feels, may have come a bit too soon. If you really look at this transition of Levi's, Signature, Denizen, uh, the way I see it is, you know, I think these are changes which are being made, made, you know, far too fast. Because I think you have not allowed one particular movement to settle down long enough. For a multinational like Levi's that operates across the world, business can be a tough balancing act. Because it has to pace itself across markets. From the mature to the new, ensuring that global strategies percolate down to the local level. And while doing all this, it also has to ensure that global trends match local flavors. For a global brand uh, that wants to be relevant in a particular country, you've got to celebrate global and India all together. So what does global mean? So global, mean, uh, global means that you've got to be able to celebrate the diversity that exists right across the world and therefore bring the best of everything around the globe 
you know, to a particular country. And therefore, for example, our design team is global and yet gets influences from across the world. So that you just bring the best of fashion you know, to a particular market. So that's global. And then you get, you know, you get Indian and therefore um, you look at color palettes that are a little different from perhaps what you would get in the US and a little more bright and vibrant in an Indian. It shows in the kind of store designs that we would have. So our stores would have wooden flooring that makes it you know, warm, appealing, and yet very, very premium. Whereas perhaps concrete floors might work uh, you know, in places like the US because they hark back to uh, Americas in the 19th century. So I guess it's a combination of uh, a singular global experience brought to life in a country and then looking at local nuances to enrich that uh, global flavor. Okay. In a sense, uh, uh, a company like Levi's also is an agent in globalization because it, it creates a common thread across different markets. At the same time, it has to be diverse within each market. So how is that balance worked out, say in a market like India? So it is a tough balance. And uh, what you want to do is uh, for consumers to see the brand experience the same in India as they would see anywhere in a global city around the world. And yet, uh, there are subtle nuances that they like to celebrate in India. I talked about the color palette. Our color palette on our, uh, our shirts is far more vibrant than you would get perhaps in Europe or you would get in US. Uh, we offer a head to toe all accessories um, uh, you know, offer for consumers. So you want the same experience across uh, different markets. But the same experience mean, doesn't mean you've got to have exactly the same uh, shirt or the same denim. It's the same quality of experience that you know, consumers really want. In fact, every six months, the top brass of Levi's from multiple countries meet up to discuss trends and strategies for the months ahead. And the cross-learning, Sanjay tells me, helps the company pace itself across markets. And it's a good thing too, given how each market can throw up its own challenges. Up next, at a time when most Indian retailers are struggling in the country, despite the numbers thronging the shops, what's Levi's strategy to stay ahead?